and welcome to Copenhagen, Denmark. On this perfect day, I'll follow in the footsteps of a great many of my Scandinavian ancestors and go to sea on the majestic tall ship Christian Radic. At a time when Norway and Denmark was a union, it was considered the second most powerful seafaring country in the world. Fish and other goods were brought to faraway places, and spices and other exotica were brought back. And in today's program, we'll look at the results of that cultural and mercantile exchange as I make Brazilian-inspired bolinha de bacalao using Norwegian stockfish. And talking of spices, it's said that the spices used in Indian cooking has a fire in them. Well, many of the same spices are used when making the traditional Norwegian fire water, the aquavit. And I'll use these spices in making a great range of dishes for a great party here aboard the ship. The harbour of Copenhagen was in 1807 the scene of a great battle in the Napoleonic Wars. Norway and Denmark were seen as having sided with Napoleon and one night Lord Nelson and his fleet came up and they bombarded all the Norwegian Danish ships. This led to many things. Some say it meant that Napoleon lost the war, but one thing which was certain was that after the war, the British decided that my home country, Norway, was no longer going to be the property of Denmark. The history of Aquavit is closely connected to maritime history, so I think I'll start my perfect day with a drink. It was stored and taken out in the world in wooden casks like this and today it still is because there's something about the wooden casks that mellows the spirit and gives it a kind of richness that you can only get from wood and it's extra good when you bring it out in the world and expose it to various temperatures and these rolling motions and I really like the fact that it has traveled, that what I have in my drink has actually seen the world. I'll make a kind of English-inspired drink using the very, very English tonic water, turning the aquavit into a kind of long drink with some crushed ice. slice of lemon, just like gin tonic, but with aquavit. You know, there's something about being in Copenhagen and drinking. I was out last night and, you know, when I woke up this morning, I, I found that this had happened. That's Copenhagen for you. We are sailing to Oslo, Norway. It's now about 4.30 a.m. and thus far we've been using the engine but during the course of the night the wind has changed and now it's possible to set sail and just 
across once through the Skagerrak and then up into the Oslo Fjord. I'm not sure it can be described, that sensation of being waking in your hammock at 4.30 in the morning and then 10 minutes later you ask to climb the mast. Up here you can really feel the movements of the ship. You can really feel that you're living, particularly if you, like me, are a little bit afraid of heights. Woo! The sailing thus far has gone very smoothly. The conditions are more or less optimal. The crew is very skilled. All the trainees are listening carefully to their instructions. And I'm kind of sad to report that there has been no shouting. No one has been flogged yet. And it all seems very safe. Oh, well, I'm gonna change the safety aspect and conduct what you shouldn't do, namely deep sea, deep frying. Bolinho de Bacalao is and must be deep fried. The recipe is super simple. You have a fish like that over there, you reconstitute it in water for one day and then you boil it. The result is this, you see wonderfully flaky fish and then you combine it with boiled potatoes. You just mash it together. This is obviously a quite exclusive version since the bacalao is quite expensive so whenever you get this in Brazil the poorer the people who serve it to you are the more potatoes they use and they just don't reconstitute the fish that much so they may soak it in water for only 12 hours leaving the fish much too salty and then mix it with a lot of potatoes I mix into it an egg And then flavoring it with some garlic and some parsley. Now it just remains to roll them out. I think the easiest and most sticky is to use your finger and roll them in breadcrumbs. That makes them nice and crunchy. Now comes the dangerous part. I don't want any of this boiling oil over me. You know how you always read about sailors, how they would get into fights and stab each other and have these scars and stuff. Well, I read somewhere that the most common injuries were food related injuries. I think the deep frying, which for some reason has always been very popular at sea, must have constituted quite a number of those injuries. Because if you get this stuff on you, then you're helpless. Now, what to serve it with? I think that these bolinhos are excellent in themselves, just as a snack, but I also think it's nice to serve them with something strong. For instance, a sweet chili sauce. And I also brought with me some mint sauce that for some reason has landed there. So take it as a recommendation, I'm not gonna eat that. They're still very hot, but this crunchiness, together with that really kind of fluffy, soft interior that is very salty, and that really nice garlicky breath and the freshness from the parsley, I think it's a wonderful dish. A great way to serve them is to make a paper cone like this, and then when you're on a ship, the smart thing to do is to take them up to the bridge and serve them to the chief officer. Since the 
This is really the nicest way you can sail. The problem is, it isn't very economical. It isn't very rational with modern standards. First of all, the ship isn't that big. Second, it demands a really big crew. And thirdly, on top of that crew, you need a few extra men in case someone falls down. would always bring something along, some chocolate, mum's homemade jam, and for practical reasons they might want to bring a hen, a supply of fresh eggs. And then at one point, after some time, the hen would stop laying, and that would be a source of food too. My grandfather was at sea for several years and he always described these years as having been very hard. Well, I can't understand what he meant. You've got the sun, you've got the sea, you've got a beautiful scenery. You go to bed early after not drinking rum all night and you've got all the good food. Of course, a couple of them, October storms may do something to your impression of life at sea. My grandfather used to make traditional food, but sometimes with a small twist, something that he'd picked up at sea. I'm now going to make his traditional poultry fricassee that he used to make with a little bit of curry powder. I'm going to make it with all the spices that goes into curry powder with an extra emphasis on the spices. The same spices that ships like this took home from faraway destinations. In making a fricassee, you start off with a traditional bechamel, melted butter, to which you add flour, stir in some milk. This doesn't taste much in itself, so I'm adding the stock. Now I'm adding some spices, a little bit of star anise and some caraway. Caraway has a distinctly aquavit flavor to me. And then fennel seeds has a, a slight kind of licorice flavor too. And then we've got anise powder and cumin. I'm gonna mix all this together. Normally I would use a pestle and mortar, but we haven't brought a pestle and mortar and they didn't have a pestle and mortar here at, uh, at the ship. So I went down to the workshop and I made myself one. There's this whiff of curry, but a distinctly Norwegian curry, I think, since it is the exact same spices that I used in making aquavit. And I just pour the rest of the stock into the bechamel here. Adding a lump of butter and some onion. The onion lends a bit of depth of flavor and a little bit of sweetness to the fricassee, as does celeriac and carrot. I'm adding the bechamel and stock mixture. I'm gonna add some more vegetables, a cauliflower, leek. And now comes the nasty part. I'm dressing this old hen, just removing the skin and the bones. And as you can see, the meat falls off the bone, so it's not very difficult. Adding the meat to the pot, and the fricassee needs a bit of salt, 
and something fresh, a hint of freshness. So I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon zest. The flavor is largely in the zest and it smells fabulous. This has temperament of the seven seas. <laughs> if it doesn't contain chili, it's certainly hot anyway. No one but a sailor knows the feeling of seeing your hometown coming towards you there in the horizon. And I've been away for, let's see, nearly three days. Soon a new group of people are boarding the Christian Radic, but I have shore leave and I'm going up to where the spices all end up. This here is a truly amazing room. It's a paradise for a spice lover. You should be able to smell it. This is the old Aquavit spice room. All the spices that were gathered in faraway places were taken here, where magic happens. Here we've got a thousand cinnamon buns. This is cinnamon from Sri Lanka. Over here, we've got star anise from China. But this here is the most important thing, caraway. Of all the spices here, caraway is the most predominant in the production of aquavit, and it is the only Norwegian spice here. I've composed a menu with an emphasis on the spices of the aquavit. And the first dish I'm gonna demonstrate is one of my vegetable favorites with fennel. And it's so simple. It's like one of those things that you can serve as a small vegetable dish in itself, or you can serve it with most meat, chicken or fish. Add a bit of lemon juice for freshness and a bit of lemon zest. Lemon zest, at least citrus zest, is used in the making of aquavit. It gives you that little bit of kind of lemony or orangey uh, tang, which is very, very nice. And then I've got fennel seeds. And if it's raining heavily, then you will notice that there is water in the mortar as well. Whack it in the oven and let it bake at about 350 degrees, 175 Celsius for about 35 to 40 minutes. So why is this a perfect day? Well, it can't be the weather because the weather has, as you can see, deteriorated quite a bit. It's a perfect day because it's a day for sharing. In a couple of hours, hundreds of people will come here to the ship to share a meal with me. The next dish is partly using a lamb confit, the Norwegian answer to the duck confit. This is shoulder of lamb preserved in duck fat. I'm gonna serve it with a cabbage with a bit of spices. You get that full 
and interesting and kind of robust cabbage flavor, but you get something else on top of that. So here I've got shredded cabbage and then I'm gonna flavor it with the principal ingredient used in aquavit, namely caraway, and quite a generous amount. A good lump of butter and a good splash of beer, an ordinary lager will do. And then just leave it to simmer for about 25 minutes and season with salt just before you serve. I really wish that I decided to make soup today. I could just leave the pot open and just wait until it's filled with water and then add a bit of spices and that would be it. Well, the next dish is parsley root. I don't know if you know the parsley root. It looks a bit like a white carrot and I'm gonna bake them with cumin. It has this Middle Eastern smell to it. And it's also an ingredient used in aquavit. A little bit of olive oil and bake it in the oven for 35 minutes at 350, 175 Celsius. And when you bake root vegetables, they become incredibly sweet. So these are baked and I want to serve them with something that contrasts nicely. And I think that salmon roe is one of those decadent, luxurious things. It looks wonderful and I think this is such a nice small appetizer or a first dish. The last dish is lamb chops. And who doesn't like lamb chops? But the thing is you need some fresh flavors with lamb chops, otherwise they'll become too gamey, I think. So I'm just adding dill, some dill that has started to go to seed, the green stuff from the fennel, the herb. And I must say, I'm all for outdoor cooking, but I do recommend looking at the weather before you decide. I just rub the lamb chops with this mixture. And the cool thing is that when you fry or grill them at really high heat, then the herbs and the spices are slightly charred and they give up a very nice flavor, a kind of almost smoky flavor of dill and fennel. has always been a seafaring nation. We brought our fish to the rest of the world and we brought spices back. One of the things that we did with our spices was that we made an invention that has contributed greatly to the world of drink. We made aquavit. And the menu today is inspired by the spices used in aquavit. Welcome.